there's a huge responsibility and there's a huge amount of compromise and selflessness that comes with that. And if you're not with the right partner, you can feel very taken for granted. I got a chance to watch all episodes of season two. I'm so, so excited. Um, First and foremost, were you guys nervous about moving forward as a trio? And did you have any input into um, you guys' storyline or character development this season because of the change? I wasn't anxious. Mm -hmm. I was actually really excited. The three of us have really great chemistry. And so I knew that it would just be captured in the show. And I was excited when I read the scripts and we talked with Rochelle, our showrunner, about where she was headed with these characters. And I was thrilled because I personally didn't see it all coming. I think that there's so many fun things that happen throughout the season that are unpredictable and exciting. And um, I, I, I was feeling good about it. Yeah, it was such a collaborative process, truly. I mean, anytime we had a thought, Rochelle, our showrunner, was so incredible. I mean, she I can't tell you, tell you the amount of times that she walked over to like the side of a set after I had like a concern about something and she would like rewrite the entire scene in like three minutes. And I'm like, how did you do that? And it's brilliant. (laughs) Like, so no, we, we were in very good hands. And the fact that we're the three of us are such good friends in real life. We were like, it was a no brainer. It's summer camp. Yeah, it really is. It's summer camp. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of fun surprises in there. Um, I can't, obviously, I can't say too much because I can't give it away. But one of the things I loved um, just going off of what happened in season one was the idea. You guys don't necessarily do group therapy, but you have the same therapist, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm not mad at it because I feel like therapy is important. I feel like friendship therapy probably should be more of a thing because it's (laughs) more difficult to juggle or handle than I feel like most romantic relationships. So... (laughs) Brisha, what is your take on the idea of the way that therapy is um, shown throughout the series? Well, I think it's a product of self-care. Like, I feel we all are taking our self-care into consideration. Um, We're all going through this big transition, our characters individually, and we know how much it, how much It is important for us to, you know, to lean on each other as a sisterhood, but how also it is important for us to check in with ourselves and to make decisions for ourselves that support where we're going. And that's what's so that's what's so great about this season that we get to see us make those decisions confidently. Mm -hmm. And it's not like our therapist is telling us what to do. She's asking us the right questions so that we can ask ourselves and walk honestly through, you know, walk through those you know, really difficult and uncomfortable situations. And um, I think that's the challenge that a lot of people are scared to even embark on. And that's why some people don't even go to therapy because they say it's, it's, oh, I have to ask myself these questions, but it's like, you walk firmly into what you believe in and, you know, you just discover it for yourself and it's a part of self-care. Now, I love that the show highlights women in their 30s who are refusing to settle in relationships, um, even if they are fearful, no matter how good a partner may appear, you know, on paper. We saw it last season, obviously, with Amber's character. um, And, you know, she's still, Whitney's still reeling from that. And we also see it with Brisha and Corbin's character as well. Like, you guys are, y'all have no problem, okay, leaving these men without apology. So, (laughs) (laughs) Corbin, for you, How do you feel like the show contributes to the conversation about not settling um, in relationships, the whole idea of Black women's standards being too high or unrealistic, and even, you know, in terms of starting a family, because you are unapologetic about all of it this season? Yeah, I think specifically, too, we haven't really even talked about this yet with Black women. I think a lot of us end up in the caretaker role you know, and there can be a lot, there's a huge responsibility and there's a huge amount of compromise and selflessness that comes with that. And if you're not with the right partner, you can feel very taken for granted. And I'm not so sure that every single woman feels emboldened enough to make the decision to say, to draw the boundary with their partner or whomever they're, you know, making that sacrifice for to say, listen, I need more. You're not giving me what I need in exchange for what I'm giving in this, in this situation. And the wonderful thing about Sandy is she has the courage to, to choose herself and to decide, you know, what it means to set those boundaries and then to act on them. And it, like you said, on paper, it doesn't matter how good something looks. If it's not working for you, you do have to have that courage and that self-awareness to say, 
is this really what I want? Is this really what I need? And I really hope that, you know, through the choices that my character makes this season, that I give license to women watching to make similar choices, because I do think it's very courageous. And I think it's super important to care for yourself in that way, especially as a black woman. Yeah, I really also, um, there's a big change this season with seeing more of Barb and her storyline and where she fits in with the group. And I love her inclusion this time around. So for you, Amber, how do you feel um, a character like Barb is in one's personal and professional life? Because she is a bit older, you know, than you guys are on the show. She's someone that all of our characters admire. We like when she's around, she makes us laugh, but she's, you know, living life on her own terms and she's successful in the ways that she wants to be. And so in a way, she reflects the aspirations that we have as for ourselves individually as characters on the show. So to have her is a blast, but also she's just a reflection of like a generation ahead of us and and how she can live her life also unapologetically. Now, my favorite aspect of the show, aside from the storylines, is obviously the fashions. We thoroughly enjoy them. So talk Yay. to us about working with the wardrobe with the wardrobe team and establishing you guys's um fashion for your specific characters and outside of your characters whose style do you like love the most yeah. oh. oh outside of our characters what do you mean like, like on the in show the, or in life like, like on the show yeah on the show oh 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 oh, oh. well i i love renee's style renee's yeah. style is like a lot like my style like Renee is embarking on her own journey. And so she's playing more with her hair. You know, she's creating her own lane, you know, with her own business. So she doesn't have to conform to other people's standards of how she should look. So she's taking those chances. And I love that I was given the opportunity to incorporate different hairstyles that matched the outfits. And shout out to Tracy Cox and Patricia Field, who also collaborated with each of each and every one of us to figure out what feels good to us. Mm -hmm. And they also like allowed us to like give them feedback. Like I wanted to, you know, use more black designers and, you know, Laquan Smith, he's definitely shouted out in the first season and in this season as well. And so many others. So yeah, it's a collaborative process. Yeah. I would say it was really exciting to work with so many black designers and to give Because we do have a big platform and Patricia and Tracy were both totally on board to do that. I wear a custom Andre Walker coat in the second episode. That's actually a personal of of Patricia's. He's a black designer, obviously, um, that I did not want to take off um, (laughs) amongst some other really fun things. But to Brisha's point about hair, like my character is, you know, getting her PhD in African-American studies. And I just got so excited about the fact that, you know, I work for a network that supports the fact that I wanted to be able to really show women that they can embrace their textures, no matter what space they're in. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I had an incredible hairstylist who was able to help me, you know, capture those moments and have that diversity with my hair, which is not something that you often see with my hair type on, on television. And it's elevated. And it's elevated. Yeah. Yeah, It's exciting. It's like, you don't have to be one way as a black woman, you can embrace what you have and also do fun stuff and add it, you know, add it in. And I just really love that I was able to embrace that sort of Afrocentric modern day um, woman on the show. So it was fun to play with this season. Definitely had girl, girl envy. Yes. <laughs> In real yeah, life, I would wear Sandy's clothes to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> and I took a little bit of Whitney's uh, outfits for myself. I, I've been incorporating more suit jackets. Yes, yes. Yeah, I wear a lot of cool like, like vintage 90s suits, like, like, supermodel. like supermodel suits. That was really fun. Like yeah. Richard Tyler, classic fitting, awesome suits. Those are really fun. Yeah. Well, this season was so fun to watch. I cannot wait to see what happens in season three. So, you know, let's. That's right. I thank you for that. Speak it. 